This was like the last Pixar movie I cared to watch when it came out, because the whole company fell off at this point. But yeah, I felt like this for a long time. I didn't bother saying anything, because niggas felt the need to meet right anything that's successful. But now that the dust is settled, I think we can all admit that this is one of the lamer Pixar movies. I mean, I haven't seen any of the ones after this, except like Coco and Incredibles 2, which are both way better, even if Coco was biting that El Tigre movie a little too hard. But of all the movies before it, aside from Bumass Cars, this was the weakest. Despite it being weaker than its older brothers, at the end of the day, it's a Pixar movie, so it's not complete ass. Like, the animation and art are cool enough and you can tell at least some thought went into it. I just didn't appreciate it like that when I saw it. To be fair, I kind of had an L experience in the theater even watching it, so that might have clouded my initial judgment. See, I was a teenager, and instead of going to see a kid's movie with other niggas to at least make it more bearable, I had to just chill there for a grip while people were bringing their whole ass annoying families with them, and the fetuses couldn't even shut up while the lame plot was on, so I was hurt. But speaking of the plot, it's actually pretty uneventful. Some bum girl has to move, has a bad day at school, tries to piss off, and changes her mind when she realizes she only speaks broken knees, compare and contrast to a lit-ass movie like Toy Story where a previously smug toy has to work with a delusional one to get back home, or The Incredibles, where we see a superhero alienated by his new life as a casual, trying to recapture some of his former glory, only to end up putting his family and the world in jeopardy. And I know some of you bums are thinking, uh, but Inside Out is about how Joey has to learn that sadness is also a needed emotion, because they're stuck together on a path to fix Riley's emotions. Uh, you know, you'd have a point. If it weren't for the fact that none of this actually matters, who is Riley to anybody? I mean, I know he's a tryhard in the boondocks, but at least he actually pushes the plot forward there. This really just watches things happen to her and whines about it. When Woody was trying to get back with Andy, you could say that he was meat riding, seeing as Andy is just a nobody kid, but the difference is, the movie wasn't really about Andy at all. Yes, Woody was jealous that a little boy wants to play with someone else, which is kind of L behavior, but aside from that, he was like the leader of the toys. He had a vested interest in making sure he returned to the house and stayed on top. You could replace Andy with let's say a small store that formerly prized Woody above all others and now they're giving Buzz the shine. But with Inside Out, the characters have to go on an adventure because Riley's been acting up. I mean it is their fault and they have to fix it, I get that. But the least they could have done was actually make Riley likable or not really a part of the plot like Andy. When we see her acting on her own accord, she's just annoying really. And even when she's being controlled, her bum-ass emotions still make her act up. All her emotions are annoying too. I mean fear is kind of okay, he may be a pussy, but he's not exceptionally unlikable. This Gus is a fitting design and personality, but that doesn't save him from being a lame, and anger is exactly what he's supposed to be. And Joy's like one of those kids in school that was on top in the social pyramid, but still had the time to look down on the nerds like sadness. Making the sad emotion the smart, quiet one makes sense for a kid's movie, but if we're keeping it a stack, it's like a reinforcement of the idea that introverts and shy guys are inherently depressed. When the movie begins, we see the first emotion with any control is Joy, which is Cap, because most niggas come out the wound whining, but whatever. He or she is a grown ass woman for some reason, with all the knowledge of the world, to be able to know what a human's supposed to do or be like. And then as time goes on, other grown ass emotions keep coming up. Despite understanding what life is about from the get go, Joy continues to exclude sadness from any participation, because she doesn't see the point in her existence. And to keep it a trillion, I don't either. I get that you need to be able to show empathy when bad things happen, but that's empathy, not sadness. In the movie, when elves are caught by Riley in childhood, sadness feels the need to make her sad. But as we see later in the movie, when she and Joy are MIA, Riley still spends the whole movie depressed, so whatever. As I said earlier, Riley has to move, and the universe just isn't giving her any breaks. Her home is crusty, the food's trash, and to make it worse, now sadness is going back in time to fuck with her past emotions, so Joy has to put her under heavy sanctions. But she still manages to break out and create a new memory of Riley taking an L in front of her class. Because aside from these five weirdos controlling her emotions, she also has like five memories that power different aspects of her personality, which are represented by islands. But wait a minute. Family island? Friendship island? Hockey island? I don't know about you, but I don't think Riley's particularly disgusted by any of these. And I also don't see her fuming over the fact that she has friends that plays hockey. These all seem like happy memories to me, so why does Joy have control over all her core memories, but sadness having one also makes sense. To make this work, it could have been something like each of the loser emotions get one core memory, an island to themselves, while Joy gets two, and sadness gets none. Then when sadness either converts one, or creates one to replace another, it ends up replacing Joy's. But whatever nigga, I'm not a scriptwriter. So after Joy tries to defy fates, she and Sadness get trapped in the dungeon and have to navigate through Riley's lame ass memories while the other emotions are up running the show. But being the devout autocross that the Pixar staff are, we the viewers are allowed to believe that democracy is useless because these bums can't do shit. There's some awkward scene with her and her parents where she tries to act tough on them and they send her to a room or something. It was pretty painful to watch. 
Not all of it was bad though, because we did get an insight to how the parents' emotions are. And that's like one of the few actually cool things about this movie. I like that each person in universe has their own set of emotions, and we see glimpses of it. I also like how different emotions is in charge of a different person's mind, because you know not everyone is the same. But with the mom's emotion, the movie makes the mistake once again of confusing sadness with empathy or emotional intelligence. We see her as a leader of the emotions, which isn't an L by itself, but her characterization is less of a glum loser and more of a grown woman in charge of her emotions. Now you could say that this is because she's an adult, so you can expect her emotions to be mature and reflect her, but the thing is, with Riley's emotions, it's established that these creatures are born adults, basically with set personalities. And we can tell the emotions are adults, because they look the exact same age as Riley's, and are also like the same age when first introduced. So yeah, giving everyone the emotions was cool, and so was switching around the genders with some of them, but next time, show a little more consistency than my upload schedule with my negroes. In the underworld, Joy and Sadness need to get somewhere, as Sadness is being all reserved and smart, while Joy isn't trying to hear her, even though she actually knows what she's talking about. Then they come across and play at an imaginary friend who didn't make the bus to Foster's home. You're supposed to feel bad for him, I guess, but he's too much of a bum for me to care. Like, nigga, shut up already. Like, he's not malicious or anything, but he's like that standard Disney Pixar character that's just a goofy ass stain, like they're not needed. They've been absent in the best movies, and in the few good movies they exist in, they know their place and see on the of the bus, but here this guy follows him through like half the movie. In the realm of the living, Riley's been an L man to her friend, and starts messing up at hockey too, which was like the one thing she was good at. So noted fake nigga Anger, who's now the leader of the Three Stooges, has convinced him to have Riley escape so she can be homeless somewhere else. And I guess 90% of the emotional collective IQ was with Joy and Sadness, because the other two fall through with the plan. At night time, Joy and Sadness have to make their train work, so they sneak into some studio where dreams are being conducted, which I'll admit is a pretty cool idea. They decide to give their own homie a nightmare, because their goal is more important than Raleigh's mental health, I guess. And look, I know you can try to spin this narrative that people need to be sad once in a while. They don't. But even you can't deny this makes zero sense. Like I said before, I don't have anything against fear of the character, and I understand the importance of fear in someone's body, cause without it, you might end up trying the wrong nigga. I know some of you pussies in the comments are well on your way to making that mistake, but you can't tell me that they need this man to stay up all night looking for things to be traumatized by. Like what? Riley's not even awake, my nigga. She can't respond to any threats, and you can't see any threats yourself. You're literally just looking for things to make her get up in the middle of the night, like an op or something. Earlier, I said Riley was being an L man, but I guess she gets it from the people guiding her thoughts. Anyway, after a quick jump scare, the alleged protagonist managed to get the train running and try to use it to go back to their base, but that's around the same time, Anger incites Riley into property crime, which causes one of the islands to get destroyed and also destroys the train. So now Joy, Sadness, and the bummer stuck on a family island, and Joy tries to snake them in order to take a two back up to Midgard, but it doesn't work out, and she and the bummer sent to the furthest pits of Hades. So upon her punishment, Joy is in her feelings, but as she's holding onto one of Riley's emotions, she realizes that Sadness has been making Riley sad in order to sympathy form from other people. And this makes perfect sense to her. Sadness. Mom and Dad, the team, they came to help because of sadness. Huh? Not to get all philosophical, but if she wasn't sad, she literally wouldn't need anyone to make her feel better. This is why the premise of this movie makes no sense. The purpose of sadness is so that she can alert others, that others can help her. But she only needed help if she was sad in the first place. This sounds like something someone would think up while they're off one, then sober up later and realize how idiotic it sounds. But whatever. After this, Joy and the bum work together to get a rocket going back to the surface. But the thing is, it can only carry one of them, so Joy is forced to Yoshi the bum in order to get up there. And they try to take out your heartstrings and look. Look, it's kind of sad how this nigga has nothing going for him and is about to fade away like he plays at the NBA, but at the end of the day, I don't like him, so I don't really care. So Joy makes it back to the first level of the underworld and has to find Sadness to tell her she matters, but now Sadness wants to play hide and seek and pretend that she doesn't know what she already knew all movie. Eventually, Joy finds her and they use a trampoline to get back to the HQ. Also, Anger is tweaking over something, so discuss that to move him around to get them in. Now that the fear has returned, the other motion looks to her for guidance, but in a shocking display, she allows former untouchable Sadness to take control. I know that Riley can be saved, she has the common sense to know that it's dumb to run away in a city where you don't know anybody and don't have any skills and are too young to participate in society in any meaningful way. The movie ends with Riley just having to deal with it, like I did five times over the course of seven years, and she learns to adapt her surroundings with all her emotions in control. Uh, no. And that's another problem with this movie. It can't decide whether it wants emotions to personally determine what Riley's feeling, or if it wants emotions to be there to guide Riley through how she's feeling. As we see earlier, sadness literally makes her sad, but then in the end, it stinks to sadness that she can handle how she feels. The plot resolution makes no sense. She didn't need to recognize she was sad, because she already was. 
What she needed was to have the fear in her necessary to backtrack from her moronic decision to leave home. The whole argument that without sadness, she can't function is a little too late to learn. Seeing that she's already like 11, what? So she was never sad before now or something? Oh wait, she was. As she was throughout the movie, without sadness even needing to make her sad. So if sadness is a need to make her sad, or logically needed to make her do what she needs to do, why is she needed? The answer is she's not. The only visible reason for sadness is so you don't look like a psychopath when something bad happens. A scenario which this movie clearly hasn't considered. But once again, it wouldn't really be sadness needed in that case, so much as empathy, but whatever. The movie was lame. I like the character designs for all the emotions, I like the setting of a movie within someone's mind, and the ending scene showing all the other people's emotions was cool, but five emotions presented in this context wasn't really cutting it. It feels like an idea that sounds better in your mind, but when you actually write it down, it starts to come apart. 